entertaining. My brother's staying. You'll like it. What did you hope for? Is Pop home yet? No. Uh, did you get any tickets? What tickets? You know, for the Yankee game. You said you bought a scarf in Texas. You didn't, Max. Uh, me and my boss had other things to talk about. I'm in trouble, dude. I'm in really big trouble. This really shocked me. Stan is the kind of guy who can talk himself out of any kind of trouble. What kind of trouble? I got fired today. Fired? You mean for good? You don't get fired. Permanent. It's, it's lifetime firing. Forever. Why? What happened? It was all on account of Andrew. Uh, the comic guy who speaks up. Well, he was cleaning the floor in the stock room, and he lays his broom against the table to put some junk in the trash can. Uh, but the broom slips, knocks a can of linseed oil all over the table, and ruins three brand new hats right out of the box. Nine dollars stencils. Uh, I, I mean, it wasn't his fault. He didn't put the can of linseed oil in there, right? Right. Anyway, so Mr. Stroheim, he sees the oily hats, and he goes crazy. He says that the hats are going to have to come out of Andrew's paycheck. Twenty-seven dollars. Uh, so Andrew starts to cry. He cried? He's 42 years old, and he's bawling all over the stock room. Uh, I mean, the man hasn't got too much furniture upstairs, but uh, anyway, he's real sweet. He's always bringing me coffee and laughing and telling me jokes. Uh, I don't get them, but I laugh anyway to make him feel good, you know? Yeah, of course. Anyway, I say to Mr. Stroheim, I don't think that's fair. It wasn't Andrew's fault. You said that to him? Sure, why not? And then Mr. Stroheim says to me, you want to pay for the hats, Big Mouth? And I say, no, oh, I don't want to pay for the hats. And then he says, mind your own business, Big Mouth. Holy mackerel. So Mr. Stroheim, he's looking at me like machine gun bullets are coming out of his eyes. And then he calmly sends Andrew to the stock room to pick up three new hats, which is usually my job. And guess what he tells me to do? What? He tells me to sweep up. He says, for this week, I'm the cleaning man. I can't believe it. Everybody's watching me now, waiting to see what I'm going to do. Even Andrew stopped crying to watch. I felt the dignity of every person who worked in that store was in my hand. So I grip my teeth, I pick up the broom, and there's a big pile of dirt right in the middle of the floor. Yeah. And I sweep it all over Mr. Strawheim's shoes. Andrew had just finished shining them. You want to talk about irony? <laughs> oh my god, I'm dying. I'm actually dying. You could see everybody in the place about the bust of gun. Uh, Miss McCauley, the bookkeeper, she can hardly keep a false teeth in her mouth. Andrew's <laughs> eyes, they're hanging five inches out of their sockets. This is the greatest story in the history of the world. <laughs> anyway, uh, Mr. Strohan, he grabs me, he pulls me into his back office. He closes the door and he shuts the blind. <laughs> He gives me this all big speech about how he was brought up in Germany to respect his superiors, and that if he ever did a, a deed of things such as I would do, they would beat me into coffins as they carried me away there. Well, that's perfect. He got it down perfect. And then I say, yeah, but we're not in Germany, old buddy. You said that to me? No, uh, to myself. I, I didn't want to go too far. Yeah, I was wondering. Uh, anyway, he says to me he's always liked me and thought I was a good boy. And he wants to give me a second chance. He wants a letter of apology. And if that letter of apology isn't on his desk by 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, uh, I can consider myself fired. I would have had a heart attack. What did you say? Well, I said I wasn't going to apologize, but Andrew still had to pay for those hats. He said that was between him and Andrew for so long. I said goodnight, left his office, grabbed my hat, and went home 10 minutes early. Oh, I'm sweating. I swear to God, I'm sweating. I don't know why I did it. I just got so mad. It wasn't fair. I mean, if you give in when you're 18 and a half, you give in for the rest of your life, don't you think? I suppose so. So what are you going to do? Are you going to write the letter? No. Positive? Positive. Except I'll have to discuss it with Pop. But I, I know we need the money, but he told me what you have to do, what you think is right in this world, and, and stand up for your principles. And what if he says he thinks you're wrong? What if he says, Write the letter. And he's not. He's going to leave it up to me. I know. Yeah, but what if he says write the letter? Well, we won't know that till later, will we? All in all, it was shaping up to be one hell of a day. I always had this two-way thing with my brother Stan. I either worshipped the ground he walked on, or I completely hated his guts. I guess you know how I felt about him today. All day it takes you to bring home butter? Give your aunt Blanche it. She's been waiting. I was home a half hour ago. I was talking to Stan. Hey, I, I got a letter from Rosalind Wiener today. Remember her? Uh, she moved up to Manhattan. She was on Central Park West. 
Why not? Her father's a gangster and her mother is worse. I don't get a kiss hello? Oh, no, I was gonna save it up and give you a giant one for Christmas. We don't have Christmas. I'll take one now, thank you. A hug too? When do I ever get a hug from you? You must have done something wrong. Oh, <laughs> you're, you're too smart for me, Mom. I uh, robbed the barbershop today. Is that why you look so tired? You don't get enough work done running around with 200 girlfriends. 130? That's all I have is 130. How do you get any work done? Get it done. Your boss doesn't say anything to you about being so tired? <laughs> about being tired? No, no, he doesn't say anything. Did you ask him about Thursday? What? You were going to ask him if you could get paid on Thursday, so I could pay green glass on Friday? Saturday is a holiday? No, I forgot. I'll ask him tomorrow. There's a problem, don't ask him. Green Black can wait, the boss is more important. That's not true, Mom. My boss isn't any more important than Mr. Green Black. Oh, God. As if things weren't bad enough, the ultimate tragedy. Liver and cabbage for Jewish medieval torture. My friend, Marta Gregorio, says that, uh, she's an atheist in science, and she says that cabbage can be smelt faster than lights traveling for seven minutes. If these memoirs are never finished, who knows because I choked to death one night during supper. Blanche! You all saw that. I was sitting right here, right? I'll get blamed for that anyway. I'm all right. I just need to sit a minute. Didn't I tell you to get out of that kitchen? I can't freeze in there and I don't even have asthma. Nora, Lori, come down and help your mother. Oh, I'm sick about the plates, Pete. Don't worry about the plates. I'll replace them. Plates I can always get. I only have one sister. What happened? Don't run, Lori. Another asthma attack. The second one this week. Nora, maybe you'd better get the doctor. I don't need doctors. This is all time that for you. What you need is someplace dry. You're like Arizona, Mama. <sighs> Nora, go get the doctor. I don't need a doctor. It's going away. She doesn't sound good. Never mind, Eugene will do. Go up and get your mother's medicine. Or you sit here and watch your mother. Tell her the ghost. Eugene! Come in here and help me! How are you? In a minute, Bob pops home. I'd now like to introduce you to my father. He's a real hard worker. In fact, he was born at the age of 42. <laughs> hey, Pop. How you doing, Pop? How am I doing? <laughs> Let me carry these for you, Pop. They're too heavy, you'll hurt yourself. Oh, no, 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 I just gotta get a good grip. Hey, go on then. I'll be in there in a couple minutes. You okay, Mom? I'm resting, that's all. Give me a glass of cold water, would you? Uh, yeah, sure thing, Pop. Uh, I don't know how he does it. King Kong couldn't lug these around over here. You know what's in here? Noise makers and uh, party things. Pop sells them to nightclubs and hotels. Did you finish your homework? No, not all of it. Mom sent me to the store 15 times. <laughs> well, go do your homework, and then we'll discuss it next night. Here's your medicine, Mom. Lori, go inside and get some water. Work should be running. Oh, I'll get it, Nora. You sure you don't like it? Oh, yeah, sure thing. No trouble at all. Two and a half seconds, that's all I ask. What do you think he's speaking to Jackson? I'll speak to him when I speak to him. Tonight, have to tonight. All right, I'll think about it. He's not too tired, I'll speak to him tonight. Jackson, we'll eat dinner in five minutes. Nora, go up and get Stanley. How's your mother doing, Lori? Much better. The whistling stopped. What's wrong? Eugene said that you were holding your chest. I wasn't holding my chest. You are You have to love those boxes back and forth to the city. Don't work hard enough, Jack. You want the boxes? They're yours. Keep them. I don't need them anymore. What do you need? Delmar's party papers went out of business. Man, bankrupt. I closed them out. Oh my god. Didn't even warn me it was coming. You told me that man lived on Riverside Drive with the view <laughs> of the river. $300 apartment that man had. A man like that. Who are the ones you think go bankrupt? You live in a cold water flat on Delancey Street. Bankruptcy is the one thing God spares you. All right. 
You could always find the good things in there. You don't have to love those boxes around it anymore. You don't have to get up at 5.30 in the morning or eat dinner every single time. You still have a job at Jacobson. You won't starve. I can't make ends meet with what I make at Jacobson's, not with seven people to feed. I can't get by without the extra $25. I can't pay rent and insurance and food and clothing for seven people. I mean, Christmas and New Year's alone, I made $150. Oh, Jack, you only gave yourself six. He didn't even pay me for the weekend, bastard. Five salesmen are laid off, and he's going to see a Broadway show tonight. I stuff every hat and noisemaker I put in that box and walk right out of there. At his funeral, I'll put on a pointy hat and go off hard at that bastard. Don't talk like that. Something will come up. We'll go to temple this weekend and we'll pray all day Saturday. There's men in that temple who've been praying for 40 years. You know how many prayers I have to get an answer before my turn comes up? Your turn will come up. God has my prayers with us. Here's your water, Edwidge. Thank you, darling. Where's Nora? She's talking to Stanley. What do you want? Oh, I just figured we could take a walk on the beach and then you meet him more. I think she has to be for Larry Carmen. Larry Carmen? She likes Larry Coleman? I don't know. I her yourself. Larry Coleman? He's my father's age. He's 20. Same thing. Do you think he's good looking? I don't think anybody's good looking. Larry Coleman. He has no chin. His tie goes all the way up to his teeth. Eugene, where's your father's water? I'm coming. I'm coming. Right. Now I got Larry Coleman to contend with. Here's your water pump. I put ice in it for you. Don't drink so fast. Would you mind looking at my sneakers, Pop? What do you want to look at your sneakers for? Oh, uh, they have no soles. They're hanging on by this tiny piece of rubber. I have to clench my toes every time I go running for a fly ball. How can that be? I just bought you those last month. Not last month. They are seared, Pop. I can only wear them two hours a day because my feet won't go in them. This is no time to talk to your father about sneakers. Go turn the light down on the liver. Look, we'll talk about this later. We'll relax, have a nice dinner, and when everyone goes to sleep, we'll talk about this comedy. I don't like any nervous things. You're feeling much better, dear. Come on, eat the dinner. You think she'll ever get married? When? I mean, she's not unattractive. I see men look at her on the beach all the time. Why does she want to waste her life in this house for? She's raising two children. Why doesn't she ever go out? If she wants to meet people, I know plenty of single men. Blanche isn't the type to get married. She was married once, wasn't she? Those are usually the type of people that get married. These are different. Blanche isn't attracted to other men. What about that Murphy fellow across the street? He's plenty interested, believe me. That truck? That man can't even find his way in the door at night. I saw him sleeping in the doorway once, in the rain. I saw it when I got the milk. He's got a good paying job, and he lives with his mother. So he takes a drink on a Saturday night. Maybe what he needs is a good woman. Not my sister. Let him find someone else laying in the other doorway. I don't want to discuss this anymore. Come in. Are you busy? I want to talk to you. Uh, that's funny. I actually want to talk to you, too. About what? Uh, I need to be real bad. You're the only person who can help. What is it? W when Pop gets home, he's tired. He doesn't usually pay too much attention to me, Eugene. Uh, he's different with you, though. He's always interested in what you have to say. Oh, really? I hope so. I'm sure. You never noticed? No, not really. What's the like? Well, uh, uh, this may sound dumb, but... Uh, at dinner, do you think you could steer the conversation in a certain direction? What direction? I was thinking something about how much you admire people who stand up for their principles. What people? Any people. Principles is the really important word. If you could work that in a three or four times, I'd be very grateful. Three or four times? This would be easy. I'll mention someone like, uh, like Abraham Lincoln, and you'll say, Yeah, there's a man who really stood up for his principles. I have my own things to bring up at dinner. I do not want to get into discussion about Abraham Lincoln. No, 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 not his whole life. Adjust his principles. <laughs> and why would I do such a stupid thing? Because as of tomorrow, I'm unemployed. Unless someone besides me mentions standing up for their principles. But what happened? You've been fired! I'm not fired yet. I can still get a 
account of that. I just need a little help making a decision. I've decided to do whatever Pop says. I'm leaving it all up to him. What are you going to ask him? Tonight, right after dinner. Tonight? Does it have to be tonight? That's the deadline. I have to give Mr. Schroeder my answer in the morning. But can you ask your father in the morning? He gets up at 5.30 in the morning. My mother has to line up the shoots the night before because he can't make decisions at 5.30 in the morning. What's the matter, Nora? Education. Only a four-year college education is equal to a four-year college education. 